This is Dan Abbott. I'm making this video as a very brief overview of the AutoCAD 2020 interface for the AEDD classes at Southern Maine Community College. When you first start AutoCAD 2020, you'll get this screen. You can pick the Start Drawing button if you want to just start a drawing based on the uh, default template. Or you can go to the drop down under Templates and you can select the template you want. The only templates we'll be using in this class are the ACAD.DWT template or the ACAD.ISO.DWT template. The ACAD template is what they call an imperial or English template. It is based on inches or feet and inches. The ISO template is based on millimeters. It's the International Standards Organization template. For now, I'll start an English or a US drawing. And you get this screen. I don't like this screen. I'm going to make some changes to it and show you how to do that. Um, I'm going to change the scheme from a dark scheme on the top to a light scheme. I'm going to change my background color from this black to a white. It's a lot easier for you to see when I'm teaching. I think it's easier to see when I do a video as well. To do that, I'm going to go to the Options command. The easiest way to do that is to go to the command line, select that, type OP for Options. The Options dialog box opens. At the very top, you have the color scheme. I'm changing mine from dark to light. And I'm going down to Colors. And I'm changing the color on 2D model space for the uniform background from what it's set to, which is essentially black, to white. I'll apply that. I'll close. And now I find this is easier for you to read and easier for me to read. The other thing I'm going to do, um, for a number of reasons, is I'm going to dock the command line. Right now, the command line floats. If I go and grab it and pull it up, I can put it anywhere in the screen. Those multiple buttons right there, those multiple dots, are the location where you would grab it. In order to dock it, you simply hold down the left key on your mouse, the left button on your mouse, then drag the command line down until it changes from this view to this view. Now what we have is a docked command line. If you move your cursor to the very top and get that pair of horizontal lines with the arrows up and down, you can hold the left button on your mouse down and make the command line larger and smaller. It's a good idea to make it a little bigger than the default, maybe three lines. The other thing I am going to change is what's called dynamic input. Right now, dynamic input is turned on. Uh, it actually wasn't turned on, but I've turned it on. What dynamic input does is it gives you prompts and it gives you information at the cursor as you're drawing. Some people like this. Most people who've worked with this software for any length of time find that it gets in the way. There are some um, things in AutoCAD that behave differently with dynamic input turned on, especially when you have the command line docked. So I'm going to recommend that you turn this off. And to do that, you have to first turn on the button that allows you to turn it off. At the bottom of the screen is something called the status line, status bar. The status bar has a number of switches. One of them could be the dynamic input switch, but it's not shown by default. In order to see it, you need to go to the right hand corner, pick customization, and go up and find it on this long list and put a check beside it. There are a number of things that are turned on that I don't think you need, but for right now, let's just turn dynamic input button on. It's down here. The dynamic input button is, it controls what's called DIN mode, D-I-N mode. I'm going to turn it off, and now when I go to do anything in AutoCAD, the command line gives me instructions, but I don't have input at the cursor as I'm drawing. I do still have things like tracking lines, but for right now this is what I want. Just a couple of other things about the interface. What we have across the top is what's known as a ribbon. The ribbon contains most of the AutoCAD commands and they're organized pretty logically by tabs and the tabs each contain various panes and those panes contain a collection of commands. If we look over into the draw pane, there's a drop down that gives you some additional tools but the common CAD tools that you would expect to find, line, polyline, circle, those are all there with little icons. If you hover over one of those, it'll tell you what it does, and if you hover over it long enough, it'll give you a more complete description of how to use it. Feel free to issue commands any way that you want. You can pick the command for line, for instance, by picking that point right there. Now you're drawing lines. If I hit escape, I get out of that command. You can also go to the command prompt, which is what I normally do, and type the command. The command to draw a line is called command. It also has a nickname or an alias, which is a letter L. But it's a very nice little feature of AutoCAD. If you type a letter, it'll start giving you a list of the commands that start with that letter. 
I'll also show you that the letter L is the nickname for the line command. So if you type L and then press enter, you'll still be in the line command. Again, pressing, pressing escape ends whatever command you're in. Just a few other things and before I end this video and get started on the next one. Uh, selecting objects or selecting entities in AutoCAD. If you hover over an entity with your cursor, left click, you'll select that entity. You don't have to do anything else. If you keep selecting entities, they keep getting added to what's called the selection set. If you hold the shift key down and select it again, it'll take it out of the selection set. You can select entities one at a time like that. And once you've done that, you can issue a command. The command, for instance, could be copy. If you're going to copy those, it'll ask you where to start, where to stop. Now I've just copied all the entities that I've just selected. If you don't like what you just did, you can type the uh, letter U for undo. Press the space bar of the enter key and it'll undo the things that you just did. You can also select uh, entities a little more efficiently by left clicking somewhere on the screen and then moving your mouse to the right, which gives you what's called a window. The window, and you can see it happening as I go through these things, the window will only select entities that are entirely inside the window. So you notice I've selected one, two, three, four, five, six entities, but three of them, even though one of them starts inside the window, three of them are outside the window in their entirety, so they won't be selected unless I go all the way over here. The other way to select entities is to start in the opposite, op opposite corner, left click and move the mouse to the left, now you get what's called a crossing window. A crossing window, unlike a regular window, will not only select things that are inside the window, but also anything that's touched by the boundary of the window. Once you've selected those items, you can do things like move them, erase them, rotate them, etc. And the last thing I want to show you before we make a video on the first assignment is uh, something called palettes. I have my layer palette open already. Let me close that. The way I open the layer palette, there's a number of ways. One is to simply go to the ribbon and find the layer panel and pick layer properties and the palette opens up. Now you have tools here that allow you to create layers and then modify those layers after you've done that. I'm going to make an entire video on the, on the first assignment, which is setting up layers with line types and line weights. So I won't bother to do that right now. But a number of other commands also have palettes, including the properties command which I'm typing PR for. And once I've opened that command, I can now take that palette if I want and I can close it or I can dock it on one side or the other so that I can use it whenever I want. So it's possible to have more than one palette showing. I'm going to end this video and I'm going to uh, make one for the first assignment.